I'm Stephen Flaherty, composer. And I'm Lynn Ahrens, and I wrote the book and the lyrics. And um, Lucky Stiff is the show we wanted to tell you a little bit, a bit about for your um, organization. It was our first uh, off-Broadway show, our off-Broadway debut, 1988, Playwrights Horizons in New York City. And it was based on a little novel that I happened to find at the New York Public Library. It was on a table for uh, books that nobody was taking out anymore. <laughs> and I, uh, I bought it for a dollar. I sort of thumbed through it and thought, this looks like a lot of fun. And uh, the book was called the, the Man Who Broke the Bank at Monte Carlo by uh, an author named Michael Butterworth, a British author. And so I bought this little crime comedy caper novel, took it home, read it, showed it to Stephen, and um, we started working on it and started laughing and having a great time. And before we were done, we had ended up with a farce, a musical farce, which is pretty much the hardest form of musical theater to write. Because it never stops. It never it just stops. Keeps going. It's like a little machine, a Rube Goldberg machine that keeps going faster, funnier, faster, right. funnier. Right. The Pac-Man so, of musical. Yeah, kind of exactly. Bad. We stole from my husband's casino six million bucks. No. And all in rocks. Sheesh. Six What? So that's what the show is. It's um, a very silly story about um, a British shoe salesman who uh, learns that he's going to inherit six million dollars from an uncle that he never met. And the only catch to this is that um, he has to take the dead uncle and prop him in a wheelchair and take him to Monte Carlo for one last spree. And um, so in the course of this strange adventure where he is um, pretending that this person with him is alive and, and doesn't talk very much, um, he encounters a number of desperate people who are all chasing after that $6 million, which is actually uh, illicit um, uh, money. Uh, and, and so there's a, a woman, very prim, proper woman from the Universal Dog Home of Brooklyn who wants that money for the dogs. There's a crazy, legally blind woman named Rita Laporta who is chasing after him because it was actually her husband's money. Chasing after him with a gun. With a gun. Yeah. Um, and so uh, complications ensue, doors slam, uh, and in the end there is, of course, a happy ending and a lot of dogs. <laughs> so it's a very serious show. As yes, you know, as you right? can tell. <laughs> Wait. I thought I killed him. I must have nicked him instead. The paper said he was dead. Was that a fake or a mistake? God, I thought I killed him. I, I think part of the fun of Lucky Stiff is watching uh, a group of actors try to do a cast of thousands. I think that's where yeah. half of the fun is. And when we did it originally at Playwrights Horizons, we had one actress who I believe had five costumes, one over the other. She would do one character, leave, rip it off, and then all of a sudden she was a different character, and then she'd rip that off. And that that's part of the fun, because I think the audience knows uh, that it's a smaller cast playing thousands. And, and it's it, that's... Just, just watching actors do that crazy stuff, I think, is a lot of the fun. And the actors love it, too. They, they love just it. love it. Um, the other uh, good thing about uh, the, the filmic nature of it is that it really, unless you have a Broadway budget, and who does? You know, even Broadway doesn't have a Broadway budget these days. Um, schools and, you know, uh, amateur productions and whatnot, they can use a chair. They can use a flat that slides back and forth. It goes this way, comes back this way. There's a palm tree. It comes this way, it comes back this way. There's a mountain. You know, it is the easiest show for staging um, because it can be as silly as you want, as as fast and funny and furious as it want as you want it to be. And and actually, the faster and, and you know crazier the better because it it lends itself to the material. And through it all, I will add that the uh, particularly Harry Witherspoon, who's the lead character and Annabelle Glick, uh, his love interest, although nemesis for most of the show, those two are very earnest characters. They're not crazy, wacky characters. They're earnest, determined characters. And around them swirl all of these colorful types. There's the, the, the crazy diva from Monte Carlo, and there's the uh, optometrist who is, you know, got thing, the whole crime has been blamed on him, and he's running after the money to try and restore it to its proper place so he doesn't get killed. And, you know, there are all these very, very funny uh, peripheral characters, but those two are determined and earnest, and, and um, 
you know, uh, determined to change their lives and get that money. We gotta go to Monte Carlo just as fast as we can.